Work. Start. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hope you stay warm and doing fine. So uh, today we're going to continue on the indeterminate uh, bars, uh, but more looking into misfit and the thermal stresses uh, to saturation for uh, indeterminate system or uh, indeterminate bars. All right. Um, Let's see. Can I get to next? All right. So just quickly review what we talked about uh, last time, right? So we start talking about indeterminate bars. Uh, that is the situation uh, when you have the number of reaction and the internal forces. Uh, you know, the numbers are more than the independent equation of equilibrium uh, uh, you can write. Uh, so basically here, uh, remember it's the number of independent equations you have, right? For example, in 2D uh, situation, you have two independent equations only, right? Uh, so therefore the maximum number of uh, reaction forces or internal forces you can have uh, is two. If you have more than two, then uh, it's indeterminate, all right? Uh, remember last time we actually cut a different free body. You can write like five, eight equations, uh, different free body diagrams. But the independent one, only there'll be only one or two, right? Okay, so for this kind of problem, uh, the key we talk about is to use, I call fed.com, right? So free body diagrams, and then write the equation of equilibrium, and then you use the uh, uh, deformation equations, right? And then you use the compatibility equation. So combine those four parts, right? So you basically have two uh, set of equations. Uh, actually, sorry, three set of equations. One is the equations of equilibrium. You can write one or two or three, right? Depend on uh, the situation, uh, 3D, 1D or 2D, right? And then uh, deformation equations, how many parts, each part has a deformation equation. And then the compatibility equation, that basically is the geometric relation between uh, the deformations of each element, right? So how they get to be compatible to each other, how they uh, match each other, right? Um, so that's the relation, uh, a third set of equation, okay? So today we're going to uh, continue along this line, look at the indeterminate uh, bars. Um, so, but we look at a um, slightly different situation. That the uh, first one we're going to uh, look at is the call we call misfit. So if you have an indeterminate system, right? Let's say you make these two bars, right? And you try to build it uh, between the two walls to connect it right, to like I say, support the wall or some whatever reason, right? So, but somehow when you, after you made the bars, you find out, okay, so there are actually, somehow you made it, there is a, a gap there. So you made it um, too short, right? Uh, but it's just a little bit short, right? So a small gap, okay, remember it's a small. Okay, so small uh, misfit. All right, so either you make it a little bit short, that's a gap, or you make it a little bit too long, right? So if it's too long, let's say it's this length here, right? Then when you mount it, you have to push it back. So you have to, right? Or just reduce the temperature, let it shrink, and then fit it there. But then once it's back to normal, then you can imagine that will extend it back and that will push the wall by itself. Even without load, this bar will push the wall. There will be force, right? And this system we said is indeterminate. Right. So that will generate uh, what we call uh, thermal stress, right? Uh, or re basically misfit cause uh, initial uh, residual stress or pre-stress, right? Um, sometimes you made by mistake or actually oftentimes uh, we make this misfit on purpose. We want some initial tension there or initial uh, compression there. So we make a misfit, then mount it, okay? and that generate this initial force, okay? So um, doesn't matter what's the purpose, um, purpose or incidental, and then anyway, that will generate force. So 
we're going to look at now how can we determine right how much force can we generate and later on if you add a load like here you're applying a p1 right uh p1 can be zero right if p1 is zero it's just uh the this you know the stress the tension or compression by itself this cause and effect but if there is load then the overall okay so for in terms of how we uh can solve this problem find out the force or even the like the displacement at point C, right? Remember last time we look at how much this point moves, okay? And it's still indeterminate problem. So the key uh, for solve this problem is again, same thing. So it's the fed.com, okay? The approach, okay? Okay, now we know this is the general approach. Now let's use this example, say how can we uh, solve, uh, find the, internal force, right? So we know if you look at here internally, right? Because this mountain there and the load together. So you have this internal force N1 and another one internal force N2 here, right? This can be same material or same diameter or different diameter, different material, either way. Okay, so same approach, right? So we make the cut, so we know N1, N2. Now, free body uh, diagram, now we can show it, right? So for example, I can just draw one free body diagram. Remember last time we draw like five or eight of them. Uh, so I can just make it, just draw a key one here. All right, so I have the P1 applied here. So this will be the N1 and this will be the N2, all right? So with this free body diagram, now, this is the free body diagram part, right? So now I can write the equation of equilibrium. Okay, that is for this one, uh, I know it's be negative N1 plus P1 then plus N2 equals zero, right? That's uh, oh, the sigma F X equals zero, okay? Now from here, I got basically N1, N2, right? Difference is P1, okay? So now I basically, the way I would recommend first, just lay out all the relation equations, right? Then start solving the equation. So we don't have to solve this immediately. So the deformation, okay? So what's the deformation equations? Bar one deform, bar AC, right? Bar CB deform. These are the two deforming elements, okay? So first one, so we know, yeah, that one will be under N1, right? So the elongation will be N1 over L1. Let's say maybe, I think it's the middle, right? Assume it's the middle, make it just a little bit easier. It doesn't matter, right? So whatever the length you put it there, and then over the E can be the same or different. Uh, A can be the same or different, right? So then uh, you have the delta two. It will be elongation of the second bar. That will be N2, half L, and then over the E2, A2, all right? Now, compatibility, okay? So what's the compatibility? Now, so compatibility, all right? Okay, so how are things deforming here, right? So imagine, right, uh, the bar one, and there's a load P1 and the uh, gap, right? There is a gap, but you actually push it here to mount it to this wall, right? So that's actually happened, right? So because you pull mount it to the wall, so there will be tension, right? So there will be reaction here as well, right? So this will be the R, let's call it RB, okay? So because this load, right? Versus the mounting load, mounting force, internal force. So this two bars going to deform each, right? We just calculate the delta one, delta two, okay? Then, but this two bars has to be mounted in between this uh, two walls, right? And that distance is given, right? So therefore, for the bar one, it may elongate. For bar two, it may elongate, right? Last time we talked about those two elongation, right? Last time we said, those two elongations added together, Last time we said it should be equal to zero, right? But now we have a situation, this actually is, there is a gap, right? So when you have a gap there, 
So the elongation added together should be what then? The geometric relation. Is that true? If the elong first one elongate a little bit, second one elongate a little bit, then them added together should match this gap there. Because otherwise it won't reach the wall, right? It's because you're pulling reach the wall. So it doesn't matter how much load you apply in P1, you apply in there, right? Those two elongation must be perfectly matched to the wall. So that's what you have there. Instead of zero, now you have this third. Right? Because this is a gap. All right. Okay. I think there may be doubt here about this compatibility because that's the only part change from previous lecture, right? So any thought, any question about this compatibility equation? Anyone? Um, where would elongation one and elongation two be on the, on the free body diagram? The free body diagram is about a force equilibrium, right? So it doesn't show up in the free body diagram. If you want to mark it, just say basically, okay. So imagine you have this two wall here. Um, actually, I think I can use, maybe just use a different color here to, to show it on the same one. Okay, just uh, um, use this figure here, right? So you imagine this one elongate a little bit to here, right? This point basically move, that's the same as delta C, right? So the, you know, this point move delta C, then this elongate. Then the second one elongate a little more. So this is elongate more, but it's from here, it's elongate to this part, right? So initially it's here, if you draw this line, and now initially it's here, right? So elongate this much. So this will be the delta two. But this whole thing, because this point, because the uh, expansion of the first bar, AC bar, so this starting point actually move a little bit, right? So move to here. So therefore this whole thing will move to somewhere here, then reach it. So if you want to think about it, right? So the first one, expand a little bit, push the whole thing of the second one to the right a little bit, right? It may not reach the wall yet, but then the, uh, the bar two also expand a little bit. So this two added together, then fill this gap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what if a delta, okay, uh, not directly related to this uh, example, but I mean, not this uh, situation, but it's, let's say the delta is smaller than zero, right? So then this will be, let's say a negative 0.5 millimeter or something, right? Then this value can be negative. That means the elongation of both of them add together has to be a negative value, right? They have to be shrink that much so it can fit to that gap, uh, to the distance between the walls, right? So this equation still hold true if the delta is negative. That means the bar is actually, you build it too long, a little bit long, then shorter, right? Longer than expected, uh, than uh, designed, okay? So anyway, this will be the relation there. So the change is when you consider the compatibility equation, all right? So for misfit, compatibility equation, you should be uh, the compat, let me just put it here. So the compatibility equation, okay, should it be elongation, right? Plus the misfit, the uh, misfit. All right. So in other words, your compatibility equation, you should include, uh, include the misfit part. And that's what you see here. That's the only change from the, uh, we talked about last time. Right. So it's still a geometric relation, right? That's because the misfit will play into your uh, geometric deformation, not the delta. All right. Okay. Once we understand this, then we lay out the equation already, right? Next will be easy. Solve the equations, right? So you have equation one, equation two, actually two of them, 2A, 2B, and then this will be equation three. You combine, solve it. That's the same. All right. So the only difference uh, is you have this compatibility equation, compatibility that's slightly changed, including the misfit part. All right. 
Okay. Any questions? Oh, I think oh, you want to really solve it. I don't think, it, right? The solution part, I guess everyone can do it. If I make a comment, I will say add here. So you see here, when I try to solve this problem, I did not draw uh, like eight out of the uh, cut free body diagrams, right? Because I solved the problem last time, right? So I know the unknowns, there are basically two of the main uh, unknowns, right? So it's N1, N2. So therefore I select the middle one, immediately give this one, right? If you use RA, RB, and then you add the equation, you can, right? But RA is basically N1 and RB is the same as N2. So therefore I don't need to introduce RA, RB, uh, draw the additional free body diagram, right? So I kind of jump with there based on uh, practice from last time, right? From the equation, okay. So this way I can quickly directly go to the equation of equilibrium I need, right? I know there's only one independent uh, equation of equilibrium, right? So I get it to it quickly and then write the deformation equation and the uh, compatibility, all right? To solve it, for example, uh, action quickly, let's say we need to look, we're looking for N1, N2, right? So we can put um, basically, okay, the solution part. Okay, you can put uh, the number three, uh, number two into number three, equation two into equation three. So basically what do you have? You have N1 half L, right? And then over EA. And then plus delta two, delta two, that's N2, half L over EA, right? And that add together equals delta. So now you have this, this number four is actually second set of equation about N1, N2. Okay, so now combine four, four and one, right? So you can get, here so you can get now you can get n1 n2 that's it right okay so we got a solution okay any quick questions that's no all right now let's move on so uh, if no quick question, let's look at another example, right? So, uh, so what I have here, uh, remember this is three bars, right? So we have three bars uh, that is basically uh, parallel, right? So you have three bars or three cables, right? That are hanging a weight, right? Uh, with a, a flat rigid beam, right? Again, this is the kind of rigid uh, part, okay? So we. Uh, carry this weight uh, P here, or the load P here, right? So we solve this one, we know it's indeterminate because this E1, E2, the material are different, right? Or it can be the cross-sectional area can be different, right? So different, let's say different materials, right? So now this time we have a misfit, okay? Somehow when I build it, okay? Uh, the, the bar in the middle, okay? is short by delta here. Right, so you see this gap here, right? So the material is kind of different. So this one have a uh, um, material, this one is, so I say it's A1, okay? So this one can be A2, um, and this will be same A1, right? Or you can have the same cross-sectional area, but at least the Young's model is different. So this two are different, okay? So now this time, if I just, now I force it, right? So I put it, put, push it, and then just connect it to here, right? So it's short, but I just pull it and then mount it there, right? So this way there will be some initial tension there, right? So the question is, um, what will be the um, force in each of the element? Right. Okay, so again, this one, we know it's indeterminate system, right? From last time, we know. because there's, uh, there'll be in this one, if you draw the free body diagram, this is the rigid beam, 
So here you have N1. If I cut here, right? Cut here, cut here. So I have this will be N1, and this will be N2, and this will be the same N1, and this will be the load P here, right? So the uh, left and the right two bars, they are the same. So they're symmetric, right? So therefore, this two should have the same uh, force. Or you can just basically say they're supposed to be uh, equilibrium to this point C here, right? So therefore, the two sides are equal distance. So the load, the moment equal zero, they has to be equal, right? All right. So equation of equilibrium. All right. So this is a free body diagram. Now equation of equilibrium and what we have. So be N1, two of them, then minus the P equals zero, all right? Okay, deformation equation. What's the deformation equation? So bar one deform, right? So one deforms delta one equals to N1, L, right? I guess all the three bars, same length. So L and then uh, E, A, E, Y, A, all right? And then delta two will be N two, L, uh, E, two, A, right? Uh, actually it's A two, oh, you can, okay. Delta three is the same as delta one, right? So therefore that's the two equations. All right. Okay, so now what's the compatibility equation? All right, anyone? So imagine it's original here, right? If you pull it, this load with the load, you pull it down. So let's say it's move here. Initially it's here. Let's say this line is here. So if I draw this line initially here, then this line will move to somewhere here. Right? So this point going to move this much. So that must be third one. Right? And this point move down this much. This will be third two. Right? This is about oh, the same. This will be third one. Right? Okay, now notice initially this bar is here, right? So your load actually you stretch it from here to here. That's the dirt. Okay, so what's the relation then? Now we know dirt one is not equal to dirt two anymore, right? Because that gap. So what's the relation between dirt one and the dirt two between the two deformations? That's the geometry relation. So that's the compatibility equation. Okay, so What's their relation? Is it delta one equals to delta two minus the delta? Or you can say delta two equals delta one plus delta, right? That's the same thing, right? Basically, those two bars, they elongate different. The bar two elongate a little bit more because that's a gap, initial gap, right? Or you may uh, elongate a bit less if there is initially somehow it's longer than needed to push it in there. So delta will be a negative value, right? Or go the other way. Oh, professor? Yeah. Should N2 be in the equilibrium equation? N2. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, what I was thinking. So yes, you're right. So this one here, right? So this is wrong here. So this should be N1, then this should be a plus N2, right? Equal zero. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're paying attention. That's great. Yeah, so say I'm making this. This is not the intention. No. Okay, this I <laughs> just somehow in a rush. Okay. Um, yes, equilibrium, right? So the two forces going, actually three of them going upward, then the P, this should be equilibrium. Yeah, yes, that's a good catch. All right, back to the compatibility, right? So those two bars, they elongate differently. So, and that give us this relation. And so that's our compatibility. Okay. Now next, just combine, solve it, right? I think we can do it. All right. 
right? Combine all the three equations, we can solve it. Okay, any questions? Any other? So for okay. this problem, Go ahead. so for this kind of problem, we would just be looking for delta, right? Well, I can ask you, what's the NYN2? Or what's the delta, right? How much is this whole thing move down? Okay. Yeah, I can answer any questions, right? Or is this a deformation or force, right? And you can solve both. If you can find that in, right? Then of course you can find the delta, right? Just put it into the deformation equation. Okay. All right, so let me put a two comment here. One is uh, just an explanation, okay. Remember, this say, I say there is a misfit delta, right? So therefore your bar, bar two. So the length is actually L minus delta because you made a mistake there, right? Or because intentionally you made that uh, shorter or longer by delta, right? So therefore, but you notice here, when I calculate the elongation, I use the L. So you can actually, some people may suggest, yeah, I actually use L minus delta here, right? That's correct. However, right, imagine you have this whole thing, delta two, right? If you ignore it, right? The delta one, delta two, there's small deformation. They may be only, let's say one millimeter versus a, a 10 meter bar or, or one meter bar. Right? So it's very small. Now your delta, this delta, it's a very small portion of, very small portion of the whole length, right? So therefore, if you add a delta here or ignore minus delta here, the overall value you affect maybe by one of thousands, right? Or one over, over hundred. So therefore, that's a very, very small. So therefore, your, when you do this calculation here, right, you include it or doesn't include it, it doesn't make much difference. It's another high order of uh, smaller amount, right? So th therefore, you can ignore it, just make it easier. It will be accurate enough, all right? So you don't have to worry, struggle with, oh, I should be including the data here or not, right? So you can just ignore it because this compared to the L is so tiny, a small portion, all right? So that's the first point uh, I want to make there, okay? The second point I want to make is, okay, let's say let P equals zero, okay? Let P equals zero, what, what happens? So basically I have these bars, right? So I put them, mounted them together, Right, I suppose put a load, but I haven't put a load yet. So there's no load. Now what happens if there's no load? If I mount them together, but no load? Anyone? There's no deformation. Because you push, uh, so go ahead. There'd be no deformation. Okay, there'll be no deformation. Okay, let's check if it's not true or not. All right. So if you don't have any load, then this whole thing you won't pull, pull it, push it down, right? Okay. So now load. So what do you have? It will be this one will be zero, right? So the equation of equilibrium becomes two n one right, plus n two equals zero. All right. So. What happens then? That means N1 or N2 here, will you equal to negative two N1, right? So if you put it here, this one here, okay? Delta is still there, right? So your delta one equals to delta two minus this still be true. And your delta, this equation, right? This is the same equation. That'll still be true. Compatibility equation still be true, the relation there, right? So if you take this into the equation, okay? So let's see what we have. So you have this uh, be N2L 
right? Over E A, right? So it's a different material, all right? So then that this is the delta two. That equals delta one. Okay, delta one is N one L over E one A, right? And then that will be supposed to be, uh, okay, plus uh, this small delta here, right? So this is not a zero, right? So it's not a zero. Well, let me just put it this way. This one is not a zero, all right? Okay, so therefore your N1, N2 cannot be zero. If both of them are zero, then the delta equals zero. So delta is not zero, therefore N1, N2 cannot be zero. And they must be opposite the sign. One is compression, one is tension. So then what happens? So basically your bar two is too short, right? You push it there and that generate tension. And that tension basically pulls this rigid beam. It's actually move up a little bit, right? So you will balance somewhere in the middle, right? That distance delta. So this whole thing moves somewhere in this middle here, right? So that the location, you actually can find out the delta one, delta two. You can find the new delta one, delta two, because you can find the new N1, N2 with the set equation, right? So to quickly answer uh, Andrew's question, if the load P is zero, okay, the deformation will not be zero. It actually deformed differently, right? It's actually this rigid beam actually move up a little bit and balances somewhere. So that generates kind of internal force, right? So this P is still zero and there's N1, N2. N1 and N2, right? So they're not a zero. And so that kind of generate internal force, right? And we call this one called pre-stress because before any loading, there is a stress inside or sometimes we call it residual stress, right? The system has its stress even without loading, right? And this actually something uh, as engineer, mechanical engineer, we use this a lot. So you kind of make some design, right? And so you want to generate the force inside. This way, your structure will function better, right? Because you initially give some stress. Let's say uh, you give some compression there. Then you apply load, generate tension. So therefore, right, when you apply the tension there, it will be actually go up less because you start at a negative value compression and you pull it, right? And there's the same load. Now you only generate a smaller stress. So that can help reduce the stress when it's under load, right? You know, like a, a, what they call uh, residual stress or pre-stress structure, right? Pre-stress bridge, for example, right? Pre-stressed uh, building, right? Things. So you give some initial stress that help later on the performance and the loading. All right. All right, any other questions? Okay, if not, let's move on, right? I guess this one, we know how to solve it, right? Get all the N value and the delta value, right? And the elongation deformation value, right? Okay, so let's look at an, uh, another situation. Okay, so what we have uh, is a situation, sometimes temperature change, right? You have a bridge, you have a cable there, right? Uh, like yesterday, suddenly the temperature drop. Right? So when there is a temperature drop, okay? If you have a indeterminate structure, then that temperature drop going to cause some uh, force, some stress inside of the structure, okay? So imagine, I can give you a simple example here. All right, so let me change the pane to, okay, imagine I have this bar here, right? So apply a load. Okay, so now if I apply load, right? So this will deform, maybe elongate to here, right? Now imagine if the temperature change, temperature change, then 
that's the same what I explained, right? Remember, we learned some more expansion in uh, physics, right? So that's what I ex explained. So you will expand to a further, further length. So you will expand further, maybe to here, right? Even under the same load P here. So the definition is since just explain a little bit, the right? temperature ri rise, right? Temperature drop is going other way, right? It shrink, right? But anyway, this will be, you can freely explain. Well, that won't cause any additional force or additional stress, right? However, if I have indeterminate structure like this one here within the gap of two walls, okay? Now, if I have a temperature change, let's say temperature goes up, right? This thing try to expand to this, but it cannot expand because the wall is there. So therefore, right, it must push against the wall or the wall must be pushing, holding that position, right? So if you stand there as a wall, you will feel this is thermal, the same try to explain. So you have to push it back to stay there and not moving, right? But the other way, if the temperature suddenly drop, this bar try to shrink, right? But between these two walls, it cannot go away, right? It has to be, remain in contact there. So therefore the wall will feel get pulled, right? So be tension there. The wall get pulled, right? In other words, the bar, okay, get pulled to maintain that length, right? Although the temperature make it shrink. So the, uh, the wall basically pull it, keep its length there, right? So for indeterminate structure, right? When you have a temperature change, there will be uh, force. Right, even without load. Of course, you add a load, then you will just add it to it, right? So that you can add it to it there, right? Okay, so in physics, we actually learn how much deformation will generate from temperature change. So I have the equation here, right? The uh, length change due to a temperature change is right proportional to the temperature change, delta T. So this is a temperature change. This is the length of the bar, and that's a, it's a coefficient. A ratio, right? Material constant, right? So for metal, for steel, for copper, right? For wood, they will have different alpha if you have different materials. But that's something, you know, you can do an experiment to test, right? Measure it, and you can get that material constant. So here we just know, yeah, it's a material constant. You can just find it from your textbook, from the table, right? Or online, there'll be material property table. You can find it, it's alpha there, okay? So now when you have a temperature change, we know you're going to generate the data, right? Oh yeah, we just talk about the misfit, right? That's also a data a distance change, right? Length change. So basically that will generate from manufacturing, right? When we build that, you have a gap data or uh, over long, uh, over length uh, by data, right? Now this one not because uh, uh, manufacture is coming from nature, from the temperature change, but it's still the same. Okay. Once we realize this, it's the similar, right? Same, then we have the same thing, right? So you, if you have a uh, indeterminate system, so you basically solve it by FD, FED, fed.com. All right. So now your data is coming from the temperature change. Okay, and before, previously, your data come from um, manufacturing. Right, and we call it misfit. So we call it a different term because of different uh, reason, right? But the result is basically you have a data there, positive or negative, right? So same, we can solve the same problem uh, again if there's a temperature change. All right. Okay, so for example here, I have this uh, uh, similar example, right? Just want you to see the difference here, right? So for this one, if the temperature change, let's say uh, we have a temperature change, uh, delta T, right? Uh, delta T happening to this one. This will be material one. This will be material two, right? So this may be E1, this will be E2. Right? 
and then you have a temperature change. You can have a different temperature change if you can control locally, right? Part is exposed outside, uh, another part in the room, then the temperature change will be different. Or the whole thing is outdoor, right? So the temperature change will be the same, right? Same or different, you can just calculate in a similar way, right? Um, okay, so we can maybe make it a little bit more general. So they say, this one is indoor, this one is outdoor. So the temperature change can be different, right? And the, then we still have the load applied here, load P1 still there, right? Now for this one, how can we find out, uh, you know, the forces uh, inside, right? So find out the N1, the N2, and all the, how much this point move. Okay, if it's a load with a temperature change. Okay, approach same, right? So we said the fed dot com. That's why I like this acronym there, right? So we use this. This is basically how you solve it. You just follow this step, the F, the E, and the D, and then the count, all right? Okay, now for this one, right? Uh, free body diagram, right? You make a cut. So I can just do the same. So here is the middle portion. All right, so I have the N1 here. I have the N2 here. Then I have this load has to be here, right? Never forget to label your load on the free body diagram. All right. Okay, equation of equilibrium. All right, so we have negative N1 plus P1 plus N2 equals zero. All right, deformation equation. Okay, so we say, yeah, delta one is because the N1, the length is L, actually this one, let's say half L, and then the E, E1, and A, maybe we can assume same A, and then delta two will be N2, L, that's a half L again, and then you have the E, Okay, we have the E and E2, A, all right? This is a deformation due to the internal force, right? We talk about due to the force only. We haven't talked about the, the due to the temperature change. Now the compatibility. Okay, now we have to consider the length changes due to the deformation and the length changes due to the temperature, right? So what are the, Length changes due to deformation, due to the force, internal force. Very heavy, right? There's two equations, the D here, right? Equation one, this is equation two, actually already gave us due to the force. Now, due to the temperature change, you're going to have delta one, right? That equals to alpha one, L one, that's half L, right? So I can put it this way, half L. And then the temperature change, delta T one, right? Now the Second bar, so you're going to have the delta two must be equal to the material constants different, length is the same. And the temperature change can be the different one, right? It's outdoor. Okay, so now what's the relation? What's the compatibility? How are the delta one, delta two, right? Uh, in the capital delta one, capital delta two, how are they related? Right? N1, try to make bar one explain. N2, try to make bar two explain, right? You stretch it longer, stretch it longer, right? Of course, it, I mean, stretch longer, right? If it's a compression, then it will be shrink, but that will be a negative value. So I can always assume it's stretch, it's tension, right? So in delta one, stretch longer, delta two, stretch longer. Now, capital delta one, the temperature increase, so, Delta one is positive, is increase the length. Delta two also increase the length. But these two bars, they are fixed between this wall. The distance never change, right? We assume the temperature doesn't shrink the, the earth, right? So the two wall distance doesn't change. Okay. So then what do you have? 
So all this try to elongate. So what's the total elongation? I mean, total expansion. So you have a delta one plus delta one, right? That's the how much the bar one expand. And then you have the delta two, and then delta two. That's how the second bar expand due to the force, due to the temperature, right? So you try to explain some, another bar try to explain some, right? But you are squeezed between these two wall, it's giving. So therefore everything add together, right? You add this one, add this portion, add together must be zero. Right, that's the compatibility equation. That's it, right? So we have the equation all laid out. So this is, um, my well, equation number three. So one, two, three combine. So then I can solve for a one and two or delta one, delta two. Or I can find out the delta C, right? Because I know delta C will equal to what? Equal to the uh, delta, delta one, right? The first part, how much it expanded. Or oh, maybe not, because also you have the temperature change, right? So temperature will make it expand as well. All right. So combine one, two, three, solve it, you get it. All right, any questions? Just unmute yourself. Aren't there four equations counting the delta equals uh, delta L over two times change in T1? Yeah, so this delta one, delta two, right? They come from here. Yes, right? sir. So you know the temperature change. You know their material, you know the length. So basically delta one and the delta two, capital delta one, capital delta two, it's no. Right, so you can calculate, put it here. So this one is no. So then you have the delta one, delta two equation. So basically the small delta one, delta two, this is the two, this is the same I know, right? And one and two is I know. So, you, because you know the temperature change. So therefore, and you know the material. So you know alpha one, alpha two, right? So then you can do it. Of course, I can give you a different problem, right? I can ask you, yeah, design this system, okay? So it can go to a certain temperature, right? So you basically, you select the material. You can use this to select the material, alpha one, alpha two, right? Because I say, yeah, the force cannot go this level or something, give you a limit, so no the other way, right? But the whole thing, still the same system, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Any other questions? No. All right. Okay. If not, let's look at this one. Okay. If there is a temperature change, so you have alpha one. Alpha two, this also alpha one, right? Same material there. Okay, so I guess we can jump it. So what's the compatibility? We, we know the uh, equation of equilibrium and deformation equation, right? So this one will under the force. So this will be N1, this will be N2. Oh, sorry, this is unclear, N1, all right? So this will be the same N1 here. So this elongation will be delta one, delta two, right? Due to the force deformation, one, all right? So now you have a temperature change alpha, right? So we can calculate the delta one is alpha one L, everyone has the same length L, and then delta T, right? The temperature change, we can assume is the same, right? The whole thing is outdoor or indoor, right? So then you have the delta two, will be alpha two L delta T, right? And the length due to the uh, force N1, N2. So you have delta one, delta two, we know how to calculate it, 
right? So let me, if you want, I can write it here. So delta one will be N one L, right? E one A and the delta two will be N two L E two A, right? And equation of equilibrium, we already know it, right? Last time we just wrote it a few minutes ago. Okay, now, so what's the compatibility equation we can write about this four deformation? How are they related? How does this thing deform? This whole thing move down, right? Remain flat and go down. So if let's say initially it's here, if this whole thing moved to here, right? That must be first you move down here, right? Because the temperature change, let's say, right? Expand it. So you have the, this will be explained by delta one, and this will be explained by delta two, right? And then you apply the load. This will from here was stretched to this will be delta one. This has to stretch further, right? To Delta two, right? So what's your, what's the relation then? They must move this, remain flat, right? So this is remaining horizontal, right? So it's uh, horizontal. All right. Okay. So what do we have will be delta one plus delta one must be equals to delta two plus delta two, right? Therefore, this whole thing just move the same distance, remain flat. That's the compatibility equation, the geometric relation. All right. So the key thing I want to show is for this one, the compatibility equation, and that's this relation. Okay. Any questions about this? Yeah, I didn't write the equation of equilibrium, right? That's the same as we had before. Right. If I recall, that's supposed to be what? N1, 2 N1 plus N2, right? minus p equals zero. So we have this relation there. So I can jump this step there. Because the free body diagram looks the same. Equation of equilibrium looks the same, right? Elongation equation is the same, right? And the only thing change now is the compatibility. So you have to, including the uh, capital delta one, capital delta two, that due to the temperature change into your compatibility equation. All right. Okay, if no question, uh, let's move on to the next. Uh, let me see someone put a chat here. Is that a question? Uh, Reg to should be N2, go to, sorry, I don't have the. Oh yeah, so someone realized I made a mistake in the previous equation, right? Remember, I just corrected there. Okay, so that's already done. All right, so now let's look at uh, another interesting example. One more, so you can see this. Uh, oh. Okay, now way back to this old frame here. Right. Remember, we talk about uh, when you have this beam, rigid beam, right, supported by two uh, cables or two bars, right, and the left is pinned, so it can free rotate, right, and immediately, right. So we know there's no movement here, but there will be a reaction force, R A here, right, and then the subject will load P, right. Uh, before we say this is an indeterminate system. Right. Right. Any doubt? I guess not. Right. So this will be an indeterminate system. 
right? We solved this problem before as in terms. Now, if we can, we basically can add either the temperature or gap, right? Let's say we somehow made this bar, all right? It's uh, a little bit longer than supposed to be. All right. And then we mount it and we still apply the load P. Okay. Now, how can we find out how much this point move? So the delta B, or we just find out the, uh, the force in this one. So this one, you have the N1. This one in the inside, you have the N2, right? So what's the force, uh, the forces N1, N2, and the displacement at point B. So this delta can be because of mistake, right? Uh, made it there, or it can be just basically because of temperature. Somehow the second bar is under the sun. Now the sun rise, so a length increase, right? So you increase by this capital delta, right? So actually in this sense, doesn't matter. It's because of manufacturing, right? Uh, or it's a temperature change. It's basically, yeah, you have a, Length difference delta there. Okay, so for indeterminate system again, the fed dot com, right? So we can use it, use that to solve it to answer the question of either the forces in one and two or the displacement uh, delta b or both, right? Okay, so free body diagram first. So we can draw it, right? So you have this beam. So make the cut there, right? So, so I have this beam here. All right, so this point is pin support. So I have the RA. Okay, again, remember, remember this point A is pinned. So there will be a reaction RA. So don't forget RA. If you get forget about the RA, then your equation equilibrium will be wrong. All right, so here's the reaction N1. So that's the internal force in cable one. And here you have the N2. And here's the load P, All right? Okay, now equation of equilibrium. All right, so we can write sigma M 2.8. All the movement to point A equals zero. So that gave us what? So you have the N1 times B then plus the N2 times 2B, right? Then minus P times the 3B equal to zero, because we know the distance here, right? 1B, 1B, 1B between uh, each point, A, D, F, B, the four points, right? Okay, equation, equation. Now what's the deformation equation? That, Basically the deformation occur in bar one and bar two, right? So that's C D bar C D and the EF, right? So we have the delta one must be N1 for L, right? This all called L1. So it's the same. So L1, then E and A, right? Delta two will be the N2, the same L1, right? And then the E and A, right? Okay, now the most fun part, compatibility. What's the compatibility here? That's basically what's the relation, right? Between the deformations, the delta one, delta two. How are they related? Okay. So now this beam, rigid beam, is not moving down flat because point A is pinned. So it can only, when you pull it, right? This is, imagine this two rubber bands it will deform, right? So when it deform, this A, B, A, D, F, B, rigid beam can only rotate. They rotate up or rotate down because the load right here, P is pulling down. So we can imagine one well, point B going to move down. So what do you have? will be a small rotation, right, to point A. Okay, I said it's small, but I have to draw big so you can see. It. So let's see here, this is the, the new position. 
three line. Okay, I'll just try to make it big so you can see it, right? Initially, it's here. Right? Now it has to rotate down. So rotate the angle theta here. All right. So now what's the elongation? The deformations. Okay. Bar one elongated by delta one. So where is delta one? Must be this point D moved to here. So this will be delta one, right? Where's delta two? Delta two. Initially, this bar, when you make the EF, it's actually here. Actually, point F is here, right? So now you stretch it. You have to stretch it down to here. So this will be delta two. Right? Okay, so someone there, please unmute yourself. Uh, Jordan, can you unmute yourself? Oh, mute yourself, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, um, delta one, delta two, right? So you see here, initially this bar, right, is at point F, or F prime, because this uh, misfit or the uh, gap, right? The actual length there. So you are pulling down from point F, uh, F prime to this point here, right? So that's the uh, geometric relation there, right? And this will be the delta B. So delta B is from here to here, right? So what's their relation, right? Should that be delta plus the delta two, right? Over this length two B equals to the delta one over the length B. And that E also equal to the delta B you're looking for and over the length three B, right? They're proportional because they are the tangent of this angle theta. And that all equal to the tangent theta, right? So this, that's the relation because you have a rigid rotation, right? This rigid bar initially flat and then Rotate down. So therefore, proportionally, this point move most, this move half of it, right? If it's one third distance here, then uh, you move down one third. If it's let's say three quarter of this distance, then move down three quarter quarter of the delta b, right? So this proportional moving. All right. So that's the compatibility equation. All right. So with that, we know. Okay. So right, delta plus the delta two should be equal to two delta one, right? Okay, if you recall last time, right? Without the delta, so that's when delta equals zero. We had the relation say delta two has to be twice the delta one, right? So now because this initial uh, actual length there, so it's actually was shrink. Uh, stretch a little bit less, right? So the delta two, now it's a little bit less than twice of the delta one. So the bar, uh, the load in bar two actually will be a little bit reduced a little bit because it's temperature change or this uh, gap delta, right? Okay, but anyway, this is the relation. Okay, so Therefore, what do you have? So delta, right? So you have delta plus delta two. That's it. Your N two L and then the E A or equals to twice a delta one. So that's N one L then over E A, right? So that gives you the second equation, right? So if we call this equation one, equation two, and this will be equation three, right? And so this becomes the equation four. Now you combine equation one and four. You will get N1 and N2, right? Now accordingly, you can calculate the third one and third two afterwards. Okay, oh, once you know delta one, delta two, can you find out uh, delta B? Yes, delta B will be equal to three times of the delta one. 
Now you know, okay, so where are you pulling? This B, point B will move down this much, right? Three times as the, third, the point D moves. All right. Okay, any questions? Uh, did you take these problems out of the book? That's why uh, I change it. I made this two bar lengths equal now. Just a little bit easy. As initially, I think it was from the book. Yes, sir. From uh, chapter two still? Of course, chapter two. Yeah, this is the bar, um, indeterminate bar. So, yeah. Sir, thank you. Either from the text or from the homework. So I saw this picture. I just use this picture. I copied it here, but I made a uh, change it. So I pushed the point E up a little bit, made the two bars the same length. Right. If the two are different lengths, right? You just use L1, L2. That's a, the strategy, right? This uh, approach, the steps to solve it will remain the same, right? Like um, the slope angle of the tangent would have stayed the same even if I'll, I'll no the value it. will be different no no the value will be different because that's the value when you solve it right it depends on if you have l1 l2 value change right or uh, different then the calculation delta one delta two will be different so the value will be different I'm just saying the approach the fair dot com approach right and the, the layout of the equation they will be the same the structure Right, of the solution you see here will be the same. You just change the value. Say you have L1 here, you can change that to L2, but they won't change the structure, the steps. Yes, sir. That's what happens. The value will totally be different, right? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, any other questions? No. Okay. Let me just add one comment here, right? Okay. Imagine if, uh, uh, again, if P equals zero. Okay. So P equals zero. Then the result, right? You can solve it again. That's the layout will be the same, right? You have the equation of equilibrium. This will be zero, right? And then you, this will be the same. Okay. This will, relation will be the same. Right, and then when you solve it, eventually you get a different values, right? And what happened? We see here initially because this delta is here, now, right? Now extra low, so we will instead of moving to this distance uh, location, it actually balance somewhere in the middle between these two lines. So it will be something like this. It will be somewhere here. Okay, so the beam will be balanced there. Okay. So in other words, the uh, N2, okay, will be under what? Under compression, okay? The bar two will be under compression. N2 will be negative, but the N1 will be positive. So bar one gets stretched a little bit. So this first one gets stretched a little bit, second one compressed a little bit. So then they balance somewhere along the black dotted line there, all right? All right, any other questions? We still have a few minutes. Uh, okay, any other questions?